This is the Raspberry Pi 5 and it is an absolute powerhouse. It's a single board computer that's about the size of your credit card and it fits right in the palm of your hand. Now you might be thinking, what can I use one of these for? And the answer is really anything, all the way from retro gaming to robotics and even home automation, the possibilities are actually endless. Now I've got some plans for how I want to use this, but before we get to that, we're gonna give it a few upgrades, both for style and performance. I'm gonna install an active caller so that the Pi stays cool under pressure, no matter what I throw at it. Then I'm gonna design and 3D print a custom made case to keep it safe and stylish. And last but not least, I'm gonna install the Pi OS system so we can get this little powerhouse ready for action. So stick around and let's dive right in. As you would have guessed, the active caller's main role is to help keep the Pi board cool. It's made up of two main parts, first is the heatsink and second is the fan. The heatsink is a small piece of metal that sits on top of the processor and absorbs all the heat coming out. This obviously helps keep the processor nice and cool, meaning that you get better performance out of your Pi. The fan also helps cool the processor damper in a slightly different way. Rather than absorbing the heat, it sucks it up and blows it out the air vents. This prevents heat from building up within the case or around the Raspberry Pi and again it just helps it perform better. Cooling is really important when you're demanding a lot more from the processor. So if you're in a situation where you've got multiple programs running or you're doing some really intense work, it's important to keep the Pi cool. So let's start off with setting up the active cooler. The first step was to locate the fan connector and then gently remove the cover using some tweezers to expose the connection port. There are a couple of mounting holes that are separate to the ones from the corners and those are the holes you'll use to fix the cooler onto the board. You carefully remove the protective film from behind the active cooler and then seat it in place lining up those two screws with the mounting holes. Just as a rule of thumb the fan should be on the USB side just to help orientate it. Once it's in place, you push through the springy locator things through the mounting holes and you should hear a nice firm click and then it's all in place. And then lastly, the cable that comes out from the fan, you insert it into the fan connector port on the board and then you're good to go. So overall, the installation process for the active cooler was quite straightforward. So it's definitely worth doing so you can get the most out of your machine. Now that the fan was installed, it was time to give the Raspberry Pi a case to keep it protected most importantly, but also give it a little bit of a style boost. Now I had a quick look on printables and there were so many really well designed cases and I could have gone ahead and printed one of those, but I wanted to take this challenge on myself and push my skills in terms of CAD, so I thought I'd do that and see how it turns out. I found the step file for the Pi 5 on the Raspberry Pi documentation page and imported it into Fusion 360. Then I created a box to go around the board to represent the rough size of the final case and added some fillets to the corners. Then I used the shell command to make some space on the inside for the Pi to sit in. To make access holes for the various ports, I used a combination of the section analysis tool along with project and extrude. So first, you project the shape of the port onto the face where you want the holes to be. You add a small offset to give yourself a little bit of leeway. And then finally, use the extrude and cut function to make the actual hole. I repeated these steps for the USB slots, the Ethernet port, the micro HDMI ports, the USB-C and the micro SD card reader. Then I made some protrusions and indentations to allow the two parts to snap fit together. And then finally, I made an air vent to allow all the heat from inside to escape. And once I was happy with my designs, it was off to the 3D printers to get them made.
So I was really happy with the way this turned out. First off, I thought the colour combination was great. The pie had a nice snug fit, it wasn't rattling or moving around at all. And the snap fit mechanism worked really nicely. I checked all the ports to make sure there was enough space to make the connections and everything fit perfectly. So things had gone really well in terms of the CAD printing and overall assembly. I was happy with the way the case was looking, but I wanted to take it a little bit further. The plan was to add in LED strips so that once the pie is powered on, it gives a visual indicator that it's turned on, but also LEDs make anything look awesome. So I measured out the correct length of strip and then cut it off. I soldered a couple of female jumper cables onto the end of the strip. Luckily the Raspberry Pi 5 already comes with some GPIO pins so we can just make use of those. Once the jumper cables were connected, it was a case of delicately removing the protective film from the inside of the strip and then carefully mounting it on the inner surface of the lid. And it was mission accomplished, so we had a nice snap fit case, a good snug fit for the pie, and some LEDs to make it look awesome, so I was really happy with the way this turned out. Now that the pie was protected and ready to go, it was a case of installing Raspberry Pi OS so we can crack on with some projects. So the first step is to download the Raspberry Pi Imager, I'll leave a link in the description below. The Raspberry Pi Imager is a simple tool that lets you install an operating system onto your microSD card ready for your Raspberry Pi. Once you've got your Pi Imager installed and a microSD card inserted into your reader, you want to follow the steps on screen. So you pick your board, in this case a Raspberry Pi 5. Then you pick your operating system, so again in this case it's Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit. And for storage, you click on it and select the micro SD card drive you've just inserted. Just before you flash the OS, you have the opportunity to make some other configurations, for example, connect it to your Wi Fi, enable SSH, so be sure to check those out as well. Then you let the imager do its thing, and it will give you a notification when you can take out your SD card. Put the micro SD card back into the Pi, connect your USB-C cable to power it on, and then you should be good to go. And that brings us over the finishing line. If you follow the steps up till now, you should be able to access your Raspberry Pi, and as I said at the beginning, the possibilities for what you can do are truly endless. If you enjoyed this video, then you might also enjoy this video where I make my own security camera using an ESP32 camera module so be sure to check that one out as well. And that's going to do it for this video guys. If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing and showing the channel some support. I'll leave some links to some of my other projects for you guys to check out and I'll catch you all in the next video.